Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and home sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest trends in the sewing community. My name is Meg Healy. I'm Amanda Carestio. And I'm Kate Zynard. So today on our very first episode, we are going to tell you a little bit about what we're trying to do with this new podcast. Then we'll introduce ourselves by playing a little get to know us game and discuss how we each got started sewing. We'll share a little something in our Sojo segment, then we'll ask you guys to share a little something too. So let's get to it. So just to get started on our very first podcast, we want to take a minute to tell you what we're trying to do with this new endeavor of ours. Uh, We sat down and we made kind of a list of things that we were trying to accomplish, and it's long and complicated and uses fancy language. But the gist of it is that we're trying to strengthen connections within the sewing community. We're going to do that through discussions and interviews and by keeping you up to date on news and trends within the community. So we think it's going to be a pretty fun time, and we think we're a pretty good group of different people to uh, come together to give you this uh, various information and have these discussions with each other. We all come from different origins, as Meg mentioned earlier. I am the creative editor at Sew News and Creative Machine Embroidery Magazines, and I come from a theater background. I worked in the theater for several years, and because of that, I have a super um, focus on history and um, what fashions were and what cost and how to create costumes and all that sort of thing. But Uh, Because I tend to look backwards, I'm not always so up on the fashion trends and the sewing hashtags and all that fun stuff, but my compatriots are, so they are going to help you with those kind of trends, and I will learn along with you when it comes down to that. Um, Amanda, tell us about you. Sure. I am the senior editor for Sew News and Creative Machine Embroidery Magazines. I'm also part-time seamstress for a slow fashion brand located here in Denver, Colorado. I started sewing when I was 15 and have been sewing off and on since then, and I am super addicted to Instagram. I'm really active in the online sewing community. I love indie designers, so I will be bringing that perspective to the table with a slightly crunchy spin. How about you, Meg? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, Amanda, so excited for that. <laughs> so this is Meg here. I am the face of BertaStyle.com, lead educator on academy.bertastyle.com, and overall just a sewing enthusiast. I like to call myself an online sewing personality for Berta, all things sewing. So you might know me from there. I'm kind of the fashion perspective for, uh, for this podcast. I studied fashion school. I lived in New York as a fashion intern for a couple years, which led me to my career at Berta Style. And I'm just here to let you know about the trends and give you my kind of quirky, crazy sense of style and personality to the table. And I'm sorry, I do laugh a lot. I, um, I'll i try to hone in on that. But you guys are just so funny and I'm just so <laughs> excited. I just can't contain my excitement. So. Yeah, we're all pretty excited. And uh, I think we're all looking forward to uh, all the different things that we all bring to the table. All right. Well, um, carrying along with getting to know us, we are going to play a fun little game. And please feel free to play along. These are important life questions we're going to address here. Um, and we're just we're just going to go around and each take a turn. Um, the first question is, ladies, are you ready? I'm ready. What is your sewing superpower? Ooh. Meg, you want to go first? Sure. Mine is definitely speed. I am a speedy, speedy sewer. I don't think as speedy as Amanda here. I'm hoping I'm not. <laughs> we don't have dueling superpowers. It's a sew off. <laughs> it's a sew off, but um, I'm pretty fast at sewing. Usually, people are astounded by they drop off an alteration and they're just sitting on the couch and I'm like it's done and they're like wow so I like to say speed yeah speed it's a good one what about you Kate okay so this is a little weird but my sewing superpower is that I'm strangely better at stuff when I'm in odd situations and what I'm thinking of specifically is one time I was uh, filming a sew along and I had to understitch a uh, collar, and I was I had to stand off to the side of the machine 
because the camera was over my shoulder and I was um, standing, which I never sew standing. So it was very strange. And somehow this was the best understitching I have ever done in my life. So mm. you put me in a weird and uncomfortable situation where I shouldn't be able to sew well. And all of a sudden I can. So there you go. That's my sewing super. Oh, I usually that's crack under skill. the pressure and that's where I make all my mistakes. <laughs> usually, <laughs> That's awesome, though. OK, that's <laughs> what I was expecting. And then I and then I finished sewing and I'm like. Man, that was good. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> How about you, Amanda? Mine is definitely that I am an excellent guesstimator of lengths under 36 inches. Oh, my, my God. My husband always tries to outguess me, and I always win. I was, I'm trying to think of a way to turn it into, you know, a game at the bar. And I would just always, I, was, I would win champion every time. I'm deadly under 36 inches. Nice. That's, Wow, that came out of left field, but I love it. I wish I had a little bit of that. I miss like ruler over here. I would, if I didn't have a ruler, I would go crazy. So that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty good at guesstimating, but I can only do it up to about two inches. So yeah, two inches. I'm yeah. very impressed. <laughs> very I'll, I'll, sh I'll show it off sometime, you guys. Um, next up, super fun. And also probably the question that I thought hardest about what is your sewing mascot? Kate, take it away. All right. Well, you guys are going to laugh at me. I tried really hard to come up with something other than this. But of course, my sewing mascot is a cat. And that is because I am kind of a lazy sewer. And I like to take a lot of naps. But then when something actually catches my attention and uh, really inspires me, then I'm actually very effective and very focused, just like a cat when they see something they want to hunt. So I am going to go with cat being my sewing mascot. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I thought I'm just reading it now again. And when I originally read it, I thought it said, who is your sewing mascot? And I obviously wrote Bunny because he's just always around. And then literally just now, it's now what is your sewing mascot? And I think I'm just going to keep with Bunny because, you know, it's <laughs> funny. Are, you know, the Energizer Bunny, keep on going, keep on going. So I'm glad that it still fits. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Me too. We wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. <laughs> You guys, I thought about this so hard. I even asked my husband, um, and then Kate had a really great suggestion, and that is a bee, because oh. I am always super busy, and I'm always super excited about something, buzzing around. Um, super industrious. And super industrious, so I think it's a good fit. Oh, that's so that's so fitting. Love it. <laughs> I know, right? And once Amanda stings ya, you, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> deadly. <laughs> deadly. <laughs> deadly there. <laughs> All right, you guys, you can only pick one, not really, but if you had to, what is your sewing motto? I, I'll kick us off. I, It's not a traditional motto, but it's something that I've kind of started to think about more and more, just changing the language that I use when I think about and speak about my sewing. But I'm starting to use this different terminology, and when I refer to sewing now, I think of it as my sewing practice. And that little change has been um, kind of instrumental in me, like thinking about how sewing feeds my soul and my creative spirit, and you know that it has a deeper meaning for me, kind of in the way that yoga does. It's kind of focused more on the process rather than the end result, and kind of acknowledging that they're really isn't an end it's just endless practice and I don't know it's really working for me nice I like it what about you Kate oh well my sewing motto is a little bit less philosophical but maybe it's exactly <laughs> as philosophical in its own way my sewing motto is nobody but you is ever going to notice that flaw because that, that, is true. Something, <laughs> that is something I really struggle with. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I will sit here and I will stare at the little things I didn't get right and the weird places where there's a thread wrong or I'm slightly crooked, and I will obsess over it, and I will point it out to everybody who sees the thing that I made, and I just have to learn that most people just look at what you made and they're like, well, it's cool that you made that, and they don't care about the flaws mm -hmm. or notice them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's my sewing ma that's my sewing motto. I need to always well, keep in mind. Well, next time I see you, Kate, I'm going to be looking for them just so you justify it. No, I'm just it. joking. I won't do that. <laughs> no, I Ouch. mean if you if you take a close look at anything you've ever <laughs> no, bought, I know. I mean, oh, totally. it has tons of flaws. So oh, I why know. why hold yourself to a higher standard? Exactly. 
Yeah. Exactly. How about you, Meg? What's your sewing motto? So mine is taking a page from Tim Gunn, and it's make it work. Because I have never had a sewing project midway, you know, thing, something's happened. It just took a turn for the worse. I put it on. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I literally, I, I make it work. I put a little extra something on it, make a belt, do this. If I cut it open with my serger by accident, I, I you know, hide it. And so I truly do just make it work. And all, like usually once I do that little thing that makes it work, I like it better than what I was originally planning. Sometimes it's kind a kind of a, a happy mistake when you make a mistake and you actually like it better. So make it work. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> just roll with it. All right. Enough about us. Let's take a little break. Support for this podcast comes from Lexus. There are many names for enthusiast, like aficionado, fashionista, foodie, sneakerhead, audiophile. But there's only one way to become one, by going all in. That's why Lexus went all in on the sports sedan, by designing the new Lexus IS, touting modern innovation with enthusiasts of all kinds in mind. From its sculpted exterior form that an aficionado can appreciate, to the aggressive wider stance for all those gearheads out there. To the 17 speaker surround sound, even an audio file will revere. Because the greater the obsession, the greater the reward. The Lexus IS, all in on the sports sedan. Learn more at Lexus.com slash IS. All right, so we were going to move on from us, but maybe we're still going to talk about us a little bit or more than a little bit. What I actually want to talk about now is a little bit about sewing starts, how you get how you got into this hobby in the first place. Um, and as I was thinking about this, something that came to mind was a article, a column actually called Common Threads that is in the Sew News magazine. And the February, March 2018 issue had a column about sewing for Barbie. And Abby Glassenberg, who wrote the column, talked a little bit about how many women get their start by uh, sewing for their Barbies by picking up scraps out of their parent or their mother's scrap baskets and um, putting together little outfits. And that kind of blew my mind because I had a lot of Barbies, you guys, and I never made a single thing for any one of them. Never even occurred to me. So um, I didn't fit into that um, kind of standard way of starting. So I'm wondering if you guys did. Meg, did you ever sew for your Barbies or other dolls? Um, I didn't actually, and even now, it it gives me anxiety thinking about facing that tiny little armhole of Barbie. I know. Mm-hmm. <gasps> That's I'm... the same thing I thought. The arms eye. How would you do an arms eye? Yeah. That small? I actually sewed for. I had larger dolls, like an American Girl doll. Mm-hmm. I sewed for um, dolls, so I did. But that wasn't until later on I started sewing for my bigger dolls. But it was a factor in why I started sewing because, like you, I had tons of Barbies and Barbie clothes. I had so many Barbie clothes and I loved Barbie's fashion. So how I got started sewing was um, for my grade eight graduation, I wanted a dress that was kind of just like my Barbie's dress and I couldn't find one. So I went to my mom, said, I want to make this lime green mermaid sequin dress myself. And she did not know what to do with me because she didn't sew herself. So I went to this house in the neighborhood. This lady, she would take all the the kids of the neighborhood in her basement and she would teach us how to sew. And so that was kind of my start. So it, it was influenced by Barbie in some in some stance, but not actually sewing for Barbie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about you, Amanda? I know you got started pretty young. I did. Um, I have so many fond memories of sitting at the kitchen table with my mom, um, watching her cut fabric, um, sew me little dresses, things like that. I remember there was this one particular pocket that she just struggled with and struggled with. And then she finally got it. And it was like this big aha moment. And, you know, I think that's part of what drew me to it um, is the challenge and also kind of the the magic of turning something flat into something dimensional. Um, my mom has absolutely no sentimental memories about that at all. So um, <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. But I, I did have a lot of Barbies, um, but I did not I don't didn't ever sew for them 
but I did make lots of outfits for my troll doll. So, oh my god, mid nineties. I had a, a troll doll. Her name was Tawanda. Uh, and, hair color? Um, orange. Okay. Oh, and lovely. <laughs> so I made her lots of outfits and. I think that's, I don't know if that was, you know, instrumental in me getting my start, but it was definitely part of the process. That's fantastic. I love that so much. Um, So the very first time I did any sewing, basically, was actually in, it wasn't called Home Ec, but it was Home Ec. Um, Did you guys have Home Ec at all? We did not. Yeah, it wasn't called Home Ec. It was... It was called, what was it called? Yeah, but we didn't do like the cooking and the sewing. It was just a sewing class in high school. And I remember taking that because it was my only high grade in high school. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, it wasn't called home ec. Now I'm just trying to think of what it was actually actually called. It might have just been called like sewing one. But yeah, it was my favorite class and definitely brought up my average and allowed me to graduate. <laughs> no, I'm <just> joking. <laughs> I, 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 I know other things. <laughs> yeah, mine wasn't, um, it wasn't called home ec either. And I, I can't for the life of me remember what it was called. And ours was actually a required, a required thing um, in junior high, in seventh and eighth grade. We uh, separated out the year into thirds and a third of it was gym and a third of it was tech ed. So we did like soldering and stuff. And then the last one was the home ec, and then that was split in half, and half of that was cooking, and half of it was sewing. So mm-hmm. I had about a sixth of a year, two years running in sewing, and I'm not sure I learned anything in that class except the blanket stitch, which I promptly forgot. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, um, yeah, we made pillows both years. One of the my eighth grade year, we made these pillows, and they were pre-printed, and we just colored them with um, fabric markers, and then sewed the outside seam, and that was the extent of my sewing education <laughs> in, formally in school. So, on the one hand, it was really cool that I did actually have some form of home ec, and on the other hand, it wasn't particularly useful home ec. Mm-hmm. Um, so, did you already know how to sew before that class, or did that? Was that your first start in in sewing? That was my first start. Um, Okay, so actually in school, that was kind of that sixth of a year, your first time on a sewing machine. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, cool. Um, I don't think we had that many sewing machines, though. I think that's why I learned the blanket stitch, because we did a lot of it by hand, because we had to share a couple of sewing machines, I think. Oh, okay. So you said your mom, Meg, didn't sew, and Amanda's mom definitely sewed. Mm -hmm. My mom kind of sewed, but she wasn't really passionate about it. She just did it for Halloween costumes, Mm -hmm. and um, later when I was in the theater, she would sew me costumes. And she made me a couple outfits here and there, but I was never really interested in learning. And Mm. so I did not actually have any real sewing education until I was in college when I was doing my theater major. And of course, you had a certain amount of technical education you had to have. Uh And so I learned some basic stuff in there. And then I had to do my practicum, which I kind of cheated on, but that was a whole other thing. And then, because I had decided to go into costume design, I got to move into the costume construction class. And that was that was a thing, <laughs> because it was an intense class, high-level class, and I had sewed mm, a vest and some boot cuffs at that point in my life, plus those two pillows in home ec. And so I was tossed into the situation where I was draping gowns from 1910 all of a sudden, and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> uh-huh. So it was really it was really intense. It was really scary. It was really hard. I actually kind of hated sewing for a couple of years there because it was so stressful to me. And it took until I was working at the Arvada Center and had some time to kind of relax and enjoy the fact that I was doing this cool thing, like Amanda said, where I was taking something flat and making Mm -hmm. it into something dimensional and looking at these things that I was capable of creating. And all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, that's kind of cool. Maybe I am enjoying this. And so that's kind of the start of my journey to actually enjoying this thing that has turned out to be a very useful skill in my life, but not necessarily my favorite to start with. But it's your favorite now, right? Come on. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, Oh, totally. (laughs) (laughs) So you got your sewing start, Amanda, with your mom, right? That's right. That's what you told me. Yeah. Um, And Meg, did you have any formal education when you were in fashion school? Oh, yeah. We had 
total sewing classes. And I also uh, went to an arts high school. So I did take sewing classes for credits in high school as well. And pattern making too. I switched high schools. I went to more academic high school. And actually, it's a funny story. My best friend and I, um, in in Canada, we call it grade 9, 10, 11, 12. I, I think you guys call it like junior, sophomore, whatever. Mm-hmm. So in grade 12, we decided, my best friend and I went to different high schools and we decided to quit our high schools and go to this arts high school for grade 12, our last year of high school. And we took sewing classes together and we were a part of the fashion show there. We took pattern making. And so that was really great. That actually was my first start into pattern making because I knew how to sew for a long time. I was sewing... Um, um, since I was nine or 10 years old. So, and even when I did my quote unquote home ec class um, earlier, I think it was in about grade eight, I already knew how to sew then. So pattern making was this whole new world to me. I said, oh, yeah. oh my gosh, I can take this pattern I already have and move the dart and make it different. It just opened up the world of possibilities and it kind of changed my life and the fact that I went to fashion school and learned even even more about it. So lots of sewing training in fashion school. But I found that since my I didn't have a very active sewing mother at home, she barely knew how to sew on a button. She was like, glad that I knew how to sew. She's like, oh, here, can you alter this for me? <laughs> um, <laughs> but actually, my personal experimentation was the best education for myself. Um, when I went to classes and stuff, I kind of already knew things. It was just experimenting with stuff was the best form of learning for myself. Oh, sure. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think by the time I got to high school, it was I was a total anomaly. I think I was the only person I knew who was sewing. I would make myself dresses for, I think I made... Um, my junior prom dress, my graduation dress. So I did a lot of special occasion sewing then, but it was really, um, I was already experiencing the, that I was kind of, um, you know, different in that way that I was, Mm -hmm. I was sewing. Nobody was really taking the time to learn it. Um, but I also, I think in junior high, probably my, my greatest creation I've ever made you guys was I took a Latin class and we had a um, we had a dress up day and folks wore togas and of course I drafted my own and it oh, was the fanciest toga and do you have a um, picture please tell me you I have a will, picture you know even better I still have the toga and it oh. still fits it was huge oh my gosh we need to get a picture of this well we, we can make that do. happen but I added I did a lot I had it was like. I was like into cold shoulders before they were a thing, guys. And so I had some (laughs) openings on the shoulder and I I did research and, um, you know, really kind of got kind of geeky about it, as I tend to do and 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 loved it. And I was so proud of my toga. That was it's I, I don't know. I'm still working to top that. That that sounds amazing, and we definitely need to get a picture of that. I'll make that happen for um, you guys, and it needs to, and it needs to go up on the show notes page. You know it does, right? I'll do it just for you guys. Okay. Um, so one of the things that I've run into when I have been talking to people who have been sewing for a long time is that there's a little bit of a um, bias out there against people who didn't learn to sew when they were kids. There are people who seem to think that if you picked it up when you were a little bit older because you went to fashion school or you went to theater school or whatever, then somehow you're not quite legit. And I found that to be a really interesting and vaguely hurtful um, philosophy. And I was wondering if you guys had anything that you wanted to say about that. Um, I mean, both of you learned pretty young. So um, what do you think? Amanda? I don't know. I have not come across that, but um, but I'm sure that it exists. You know, I'm really active in the online sewing community, and there are people who started sewing earlier this year, and I don't think they're treated any differently than people who have been sewing for a really long time. It's really, 
I've found that particular community to be really encouraging and embracing of people who want to get in there and um, and learn how to sew for the first time. So I have not come across that, but I am sure that it exists. I think it. I think it's a little bit more with the older crowd, the people mm-hmm. who did learn from their parents or 4-H or home mm-hmm. ec classes, who kind of seem to think that that's maybe the only real way to learn, the only right way to learn. Do you have mm-hmm. any thoughts on that, Meg? Well, the only thing I can think of is I remember there was students in fashion school and in sewing class, they were like, I don't know why I have to know how to sew. I just want to design clothes. And I just, I would judge them. I'm like, you need to know how to sew in order to design a garment that could actually, you know, exist on the human body. Exactly. (laughs) So it was those people I'm like, "Mm mm-hmm. But I found, yeah, really, I haven't come across that or I would never put a judgment on someone. I know uh, a lot of my friends are starting to learn how to sew now and I like to teach them I think the more the merrier and that's Absolutely. I think why we're all in this career path and we love to teach people no matter what age to start sewing and I think you know we're trying to do that with this podcast too hopefully some sewers that want to dip their toes in we have lots of you know stuff that will help people but yeah I don't know just my take on that so what I'm hearing is that you guys aren't judging me because I didn't start Absolutely selling not. until I was like 20. Oh, no, 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 no not at all. <laughs> okay, fantastic, because that always makes me just a little bit nervous. And I'm glad to hear you guys haven't run into that. It's been pretty rare for me, but every once in a while I, I, I run into that, and it's just a little like – it seems to me like if you want the the hobby to keep going, if you want people to keep sewing in the world, mm-hmm. you've got to be open to having younger people join in. Uh-huh. Agreed. Okay, this is my favorite part of the show when we discuss Sojo, a.k.a. Sewing Mojo. And Sojo is really what is inspiring you right now, whether it's an image, a pattern, um, a particular fabric. And let's let's go around. Kate, what is your Sojo right now? Well, it seems like the fall weather is really here to stay now. Um, we've had some some warmer weather. I've been able to wear like some t-shirts and stuff, but it's it, it's not going to hold on much longer. So I've had to pull start pulling out my longer sleeve shirts because I've got a large collection of warm weather shirts and not a very large collection of cool weather shirts. And uh, one of the first things I pulled out was my Roscoe blouse that I made earlier this year for our uh, work wardrobe feature in So News, and. Um, I put it on. I hadn't worn it more than I think once because we. I finished it right as the weather was starting to get warm and it's got three quarter length sleeves and I didn't really want to wear three quarter length sleeves. And I put it on and I was so happy because it is so comfortable and it's so cute and I feel really pretty when I'm wearing it and I really love the fabric. It's this great um, black and white print and um, it's just... I just love it. I love this pattern, and I need to make more. So luckily, I have bought some fabric for that already. I bought it at the, actually, about the time I finished the last one. I haven't actually cut it out yet, but that is on my list of things to do. And I am super excited to sew my Roscoe blouse. That's by True Bias, if nobody else is aware. And that is my Sojo. Such a great fall pattern. I've got one of those on my list, too. It's really fantastic. So good. What about you, Meg? All right, so my Sojo right now is a pair of wide leg bell bottoms. I feel like the trends lately in the past like five years have been skinny jeans and skinny Mm -hmm. pants and leggings. And I just want to bring that hemline out. I was at the mall last night, actually, and so many stores are embracing the 70s trend that I was looking at the... Vogue runway report. The 70s are kind of coming back and I just want to make some 70s high waist bell bottoms. Super, super into it. Nice. Love that. And you guys, I totally cheated. I have two this week. Um, <gasps> oh, no. that's okay. So sorry, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> but not really. If you're excited about two things, then you should talk about two I'm things. I'm excited about so many things. Um, but I, as the, the temperatures are cooling off here, I have found myself... Going back to my old standard, which is pants, tank top, cardigan. I wore it all last winter, and by the time spring rolled around, I was so done with it. So I am really not, um, I'm, I'm not allowed to sew any more cardigans um, for a good long while. <laughs> but I am really excited about 
pinafores. Um, there are a lot of great patterns out there, and I think it's just a fun way. I mean, you can wear them year round. You can wear them layered over long sleeve shirts and with sweaters and leggings and tights and really get a lot of use out of them. And it's not pants and a cardigan. So I'm going to sew some pinafores. But I am also really, really excited about the Sew Frosting Challenge on Instagram. It's happening Mm -hmm, now um, through the end of November. Okay, you guys obviously know what this is and I don't. It's so so great. (laughs) Tell me. It's hosted by Kelly Ward of True Bias and Heather Liu of Closet Case Patterns. And it's just an opportunity. Everybody has been sewing. Lots of basic, lots lots of basics, lots of jeans, lots of t-shirts. And this is a chance to do something Something totally fun, totally wild, totally impractical. So whether it's a pattern that you've had in your stash or you've been looking for an opportunity to buy but don't have any fancy um, parties to go to, now's your chance to just make make something fun, experimental, pick a crazy fabric, and really kind of get out of your comfort zone. So inspiring. Very cool. Yeah, I love that. I feel like I need to do the opposite of that. I need to do a more basics. <laughs> you know, when I <laughs> want to go, I have so many things that I make for Berta as my mashups. And even when I contribute um, for the column and so new as pattern play, I usually do something like crazy, funky at faux fur. So I need any more basics in my wardrobe. So I, I'm going to definitely follow that. I'm so excited to see what you make, Amanda, because I usually do just see you make your cardigans, tank tops, oh, and pants, my gosh. Which, which I love. But Amanda's a big fan of neutral colors. I love um, neutrals. So yeah, I think, you know, my um, my take will probably be something that doesn't look really exciting, but it'll be really exciting for me. Baby steps. Baby uh-huh. steps. I Baby steps. <laughs> well, super excited. <laughs> um, hopefully there'll be some neon in there. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with neon. Maybe a little neon. Maybe. Uh, it's yeah. very yeah. <laughs> And that finally leads us into our last segment um, of the podcast, and it's Sew and Tell. So it's just a chance for us to sew and tell with ourselves and your you being the community. We want your feedback. And so each episode, we are going to ask a question. And this being the first episode, we don't have any responses yet. But going forward, we will read some of the responses from you in each episode before we ask the next question. So suiting with the theme of this episode, we want to ask you, what made you want to start sewing? Was it Barbie? Was it did your mom sew? Did you go into theater and take a sewing class. No, I'm just, (laughs) I love that, Kate. But yeah, just we want to know where you guys got your start in sewing. So you can go to our show notes page, which can be found on sewdaily.com slash sewandtell. And the and is spelled out. I was trying to think of the, what's the symbol called for the and? I was trying to say not. Amp- ampersand. See, learn something new every day. I was going to say, don't do that. So spell it out. S-E-O-A-N-D-T-E-L-L. That's S-E-W-A-N-D. Oh, oh, my gosh. Did I spell it wrong? Oh my- <laughs> Guys, I'm not cut out for this yet. <laughs> Oh my gosh. How embarrassing, guys. I said sewing was my best class in high school, okay? (laughs) Um, So you can find all of the show notes. Everything that we talk about, we'll link to, and you can leave your answer to our question in the comment section. And also make sure to follow us on Instagram at sewandtellpod on Instagram and leave your answer there on a post so we can see. So thank you guys for joining us. I hope you enjoyed our first episode. We're so excited to keep recording and it's been a pleasure talking with you guys so thanks guys thanks meg thanks amanda thanks so much until next time yeah happy stitching bye for links to everything we talked about in this episode go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash so and tell if you want to get in touch with us find our email address also on our show notes page or visit us on Instagram at SewAndTellPod to answer the SewAndTell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is a production of FNW Media Studios and is produced and hosted by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. 
Our audio engineer and editor is Evan Rutherford, and our executive producer is Jared Mayer. <laughs>